In Angular, you can either use the built-in directives or you can create your custom directive. In this part, we will create a custom attribute directive. So for that, let us go to Visual Studio Code and see it in action. In here, I'll just go to the Explorer and then inside the App folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to name this folder the Directives folder. Now to create a directive, we are going to use the Angular CLI. So I'll just right click in here and then go to open in integrated terminal. Then I'm going to just type in here ng g for generate. I'll just type the full name. So generate. We want to generate a directive. So I'll just type in here directive. And then the name of the directive is going to be the header directive. I'll just press enter. So the directive now is being created. You can see that the directive was created and it was also configured in the app.module.ts. So if you go to the app.module.ts, I'll just close this window. You can see in here that the header directive has been added after the pipes. So I'll just type in here, directives. Now, if you go to the directives folder, you'll see in here that you have a file, which is the unit testing files of the spec.ts, but the important file in here is the header.directive.ts. And here, you can see that a directive has a different decorator compared to the components because the component, for example, has the component decorator, a module has the ng module decorator, a directive has the at directive decorator. Now, in the class, we're going to define the code. Now, when you're inside the constructor, we are going to inject the element ref, which is a wrapper around a native element inside of a view. So for that, I'll just type in here private, and then el, this is just a name. The type is going to be the element ref. And element ref belongs to the Angular core. And here we are going to type some code. So whatever HTML element has the app header, then this style will be updated. For that, I'll just type in here this.element. Then I'll catch or I'll access the element. And then I'll set the style for the element. And in this style, I'll set the background color. So background color. And let's say I want to set the color to be yellow. This is all you can do just for testing, but if you want, you can, of course, expand this one to even have like events. For example, whenever you have the mouse over the element, you have a different color. Then when the mouse just goes away, then you have a different color. You can do all this stuff with directives, but we're going to keep this tutorial simple. We're just going to have this directive change the background color of the element. To use this directive, I'll just go to the home.component.html. And then in here on the H2, I'm just going to remove the ng style and then type app header. And if you hover on the app header, you'll see that this is a directive. Let us save the changes. Then in the home component, I'll also comment out all these lines. Will not use them so I can even remove them, but I'll just keep them in here in case you need them. I'll actually just comment out the whole constructor and just create a new constructor in here. CTOR and then double tab. And now then I'll just save the changes and go back to the app. Since we have used the directive in here, we should see the H2 tag in a yellow background color. So now in here, you can see that the directive was applied and the directive did change the background color for this HTML element.